Hello, hello, hello. This is Rupesh, and you're watching C Minutes video series on C++. And today's topic is hierarchical inheritance in C++. So I have two example here. Hierarchical inheritance is multiple derived classes with same base class is called hierarchical inheritance. So let's see the diagram for that first. So multiple derived classes. So let's create multiple derived classes. There could be any number of derived classes. Let's give them number D5 and there will be one base class and everyone is inheriting. Okay. So this is the example of hierarchical inheritance in C++ and this I can say is the most important inheritance in C++ because every programmer uses this like anything because this particular example is very good for creating interfaces in C++. If you don't know what is interface, don't worry, I'll be creating a video for that and by the time you're watching this video, maybe it is already created. So you search interfaces in C++ with space CPP nuts, you will get that video. And actually this is not the only way you will use interface, I mean you will implement interface, but this is the best way to do that. But uh, wait a minute, I'll give you a little bit of hint what is interface. So you all might be familiar with the pointers, right? So base pointer b let's make it small b here you can initialize either base object or d1 d2 d3 d4 d5 all the derived class object inside this so for for example i can take new d1 so this d1 object is going inside b which is of b i mean base pointer now the important part to notice is let's suppose Every derived class is having f1. This is a function. This f1 is there in every class and this f1 function is different in every class, but the name is similar. So here simply by writing b f1, you are actually using the interface and here you are calling f1 of derived type whatever the type is, let's suppose initialized D1 here. So it will be calling D1's F1. If you are initializing D2 or D3, it will be calling F1 of either D2 or D3. It depends on the object type you are initializing in. But this thing will not work if you are not having this virtual base. If you don't know what is virtual, I'll be creating video for that also. Don't worry. Or maybe it is already created. So please check that. So I think you got the idea here. This is how we create the interface. So this B is pointing to any derived object and you can call that F1 and it will call these F1 function of respective type. So this is called dynamic binding. And I have a video for this also, what is called dynamic binding and static binding. And this video is already created so you can go ahead and watch that one. So this one is the use of hierarchical inheritance. Now let's see the example of hierarchical inheritance. So for that I need to undo all these things. Wait a minute, it will go off. So let's look at the first example. Here, YouTuber, engineer and doctor all will be, yes, derived classes. You guessed correctly. So on top, human and everyone is inheriting that. So YouTuber, engineer and doctor because they all are human. YouTuber is human, engineer is human and doctor is human. And there is a saying in inheritance world. I don't remember where did I read this, but someone told that if animal and vehicles was not there in world, then it would have been impossible for people to understand inheritance because everyone take this example to explain these topics because it is very easy to understand this. So let's go for the uh, another one. I know you might have guessed it correctly. So on top it will be coming like vehicle and here we have car. Okay. So this is how it should be. So a few of the people might be asking that what is the real time use of all these things? Actually, if you understand this, then you know the real time use. Let's take the example of PUBG. So if we are creating a game, I'll go with PUBG. It is PUBG. I know lots of the people might be knowing this game already. My brother used to play this game like anything. So I know this game. 
and he showed me once that how to pick uh, different guns, how to pick this, that and all that. So let's assume you are a developer and you are supposed to develop five gun. Okay. So maybe first gun is uh, Magnum. Actually, I used to play Counter Strike too much in my college time. So I remember this name and Maverick and all that. If I'm not wrong, these all are the guns. So AK-47 and let's suppose type 1 and type 2. So these are five gun you were supposed to create and all these fire five guns will have different different firing power, firing speed and stability and all that. So my suggestion is if you are creating these guns, then better you put a top class like a gun and inherit that gun in all the classes. So whatever is there in all these five guns common you can put here so that you don't have to repeatedly write all those things again and again. And second advantage is using pointer or reference you can achieve the dynamic binding so that you don't have to use if and else condition. Uh, let me give you the example here. Let's suppose there is a class player, some player, actual player is having some gun. Obviously, they will be having a gun, a gun pointer G. Okay. So dynamically, you can initialize this G and notice this, I'm keeping it as a gun. So this is the type and dynamically you can initialize whatever gun you are choosing in this pointer and that player is holding that gun at that time. Are you getting my point? You don't have to uh, write like a Magnum M and then this one Maverick uh, M2 then this AK-47 maybe AK. Are you getting this? So if you're not having this you have to have all these types defined inside your class and let's suppose there is a function called shoot so void shoot and here you won't be knowing what gun you are holding until unless you are maintaining another variable to tell you that then you have to go for if and else conditions and all that crap but I'm telling you what you can do is you can just have this pointer and Dynamically, you will be assigning what gun you are choosing in constructor or set gun or something and you will set this pointer G using any type and when you are shooting, you will be doing just this. You have this G and fire. Okay, so this fire is there in every gun. Are you getting my point? Fire and fire and obviously there should be a virtual class so that you can do this dynamic binding but this is the best use of inheritance okay otherwise you would have gone through lot of pain right so this is a real time example of where to use inheritance not only this you have seen my single level multi level multiple inheritance so they all are really very useful when you will be having the problems in your in your hand and you will be able to map those problems to the respective Inheritance. So if you are having problem in your hand which is best suited for single, then you will go for single inheritance. If it is for multi-level, you will go for multi-level. If it is for multiple inheritance, you will go for that. Otherwise, you will go for an heretical hybrid and all that. So it depends on the problem you have in your hand. And the ability to solve that problem would come with practice. So let's quickly see the real implementation of these so I'll take the example here first example so let's inherit that I'll be inheriting with public for simplicity human and the same thing will go in everywhere okay so you can see that we have inherited human in all three classes and let's have one common function for human breathing and we can just simply print the masses that I am breathing because human have one common property they all breathe correct so this is the best function to keep in common class 
You don't have to implement this common function in all the classes. You will directly take it from top. Now, if you will create a YouTuber U and you will ask him to breathe, it will, I mean, they will start breathing. <laughs> YouTubers are breathing. Oh my God, public. So if I'll compile this, voila, I am breathing. And if you'll do the same thing with others, you might be asking this question that what is this example showing? This example is showing that there was a function common in every class, YouTuber, engineer and doctor, and that was breathing. So instead of writing that particular function in every class, what I did, I pull that function on top of the class and created another class and put that function there and inherited that class in all these classes so that that function will come in all the classes. So I don't have to write that function three times or maybe n number of time. This is one of the example, I mean, advantage of this inheritance. And another advantage is I told you that we can implement interfaces with them. And one more thing to notice that this case is not true all the time because see, if YouTuber is there, they all have some work, right? I mean, this engineer will do some work, doctor will do some work and YouTuber will do some work. And if there is a function called work and that function is common in all the classes, you cannot pull that function up because they all work differently. What I mean to say is YouTubers work is to create the videos. Engineers work is to go into the company and work on the projects. Doctors work, we all know that they save our life. If they all have one function in common like this void work, you cannot take out these function from those classes. Okay. You might have understood this because this is very obvious case. So what you will do, you will keep all those functions with them without pulling into this class. And it makes sense human breathe. So you are taking that function into this human class and it makes sense but if you will take this function which is work and put it here then it might not be true for human class because every human doesn't work so let's give the specific messages for all of these like creating videos and engineer will be thinking for their project so and this another guy is saving uh, your grandmom, <laughs> not a good example, but still, but I think you got the point here, even though you have work function common in all the fun, I mean classes, you won't take them and put it into a common class. You will do this when it will make sense. So if you will do this now, like work, so YouTuber is working. And then engineer dot work. So this engineer is working and then this D dot work. This doctor is also working B. Okay. We got some issue here. Okay. These all functions should be public. Okay. What is this? Did we miss something somewhere? Okay. ENDL. Compile it again, dude. Gotcha. I'm breathing, creating videos. So this is. YouTuber, I'm breathing, hello, and I'm working on projects. So this is maybe an engineer. And I'm breathing, saying your grandmom is the doctor one. So this YouTuber will call its own function. And similarly, engineer and doctors will call their respective work function. So depending on the situation, you will use hierarchical inheritance. And you can achieve more than this, what I'm explaining you here, if you're having a good situation in your hand. So it's always depending on the situation, what you're dealing with. And if you want to see the real time use of this particular inheritance, go ahead and watch my another video, which is about static binding and dynamic binding, where I have used hierarchical inheritance and explained what is the difference between dynamic binding and static binding. And there are many things to cover in this. Like if you're calling or creating, suppose YouTuber object U, then it is not calling the YouTubers constructor 
first first it will call human constructor then it will call youtuber constructor and all that i have explained in my previous videos so i don't want to repeat that again because it will be too much so if you really want to enjoy full series of inheritance please watch my video from beginning which is about introduction of inheritance in c++ that is a little big video but you won't forget inheritance ever in your life if you watch that video and please follow all those videos like single inheritance multi level inheritance multiple inheritance and all that so that you will have a full complete diagram in your mind that in what situation you should go for what inheritance so i'll keep this video this much thanks for watching and if you like the video don't forget to hit the like button dude and make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you will get the notification for upcoming videos like this bye bye